Um, I just want to spend a few minutes talking, talking you all through uh, some, of the, uh, some of the roadmap that we hope to deliver on in the next few months at Snowplow. Um, so we've got three key priorities that are driving our roadmap at Snowplow. We want to make Snowplow easier to use. We want to make it possible to run Snowplow anywhere. Um, and there's a, a bit of a focus right now around making data protection and, and, and compliance easier for our customers. So I'm going to dive into each of these three in a little bit of detail. But to start off with making Snowplow easy to use, um, the, 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 the driving principle behind really everything that we've developed at Snowplow to date has been around uh, giving our users power, control and power to do more with their data. Um, making Snowplow easy uh, has, has, has always sort of been a secondary consideration, if a consideration at all. And I think we've ended up in a, in a situation where we have a very powerful platform, but one that isn't easy enough to use. So that's a, a balance that we hope to, to redress. And there are really two, two big initiatives um, there. So one is building out a, a, a UI on top, of, um, on top of the platform for our paid for users. And the other is launching solutions powered by, powered by Snowplow. So on the, on the UI side of things, um, the idea is that there, there are a huge number of tasks um, around, uh, around your pipeline. Um, there are tasks around setting up and configuring it. Uh, once it's up and running, there are tasks around uh, monitoring it. And then there are a set of tasks around managing uh, data protection and compliance. And all of those things are, are, are tough and they're gnarly and they're difficult. And, um, and, and so the idea here is to provide kind of guided workflow uh, through a UI to make all these tasks easier, easier for our users. Um, our product manager for Snowplow Insights, Mike, is here. So he's really leading the charge on these initiatives. And if any of you are interested in diving into to detail on any of them, then I urge you to corner him and ask him difficult questions once, the, uh, uh, w once we're through with the talks. Um, the, second the, the second big initiative around making Snowplow easier to use is launching uh, solutions on top of our platform. So a lot of the power of Snowplow comes in its flexibility. If you, if you think about the big difference between Snowplow and the kind of packaged analytics solutions out there like Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics, um, a lot of the power in Snowplow comes from the fact that you as a business don't have to squash your business to fit a one size fits all data model. Um, you, can, you can sit down and you can define uh, the events that describe how your users engage with you and you engage with your users across all your different platforms and channels. You can sit down and from the ground up define the entities uh, um, that are involved in those events and those definitions live as, as, uh, as schemas. And then because all of those schemas are versioned, you can change them over time. Um, so that means that your, your, your pipeline and the data that you collect really closely reflect um, what's actually happening in your business. So that's, that's enormously powerful, but it creates this, this day zero blank sheet of paper problem for a lot of our new users. A lot of our users, especially those who are coming from the package analytics world, want to, want to come and be told, well, what are, what's the tracking that I need to set up on, on day one? What are the, the reports that I, should be, uh, that I should be building? And actually being given a blank sheet of paper and being asked, well, what are the questions you want to ask? What are the journeys you want to track is, is a bit um, intimidating. But the other thing that we've noticed is if we look across our user base and you take two or three different companies in, in the, the same vertical with the same business model, actually their snowplow setups might be pretty similar. 80% of their, uh, their setup might be the same. Um, and so the idea is um, that, a, that, that a solution is really a kind of a, a template that sat on Snowplow. Snowplow is this incredibly flexible horizontal platform, but if we can make it possible to define a solution where a solution is really composed up of a set of schemas, 
uh, for defining what you're tracking, a set of data models for how you want to compute on that data, and potentially a set of real-time data processing apps that are, that are running that computation. Um, then you've got uh, something that you can implement in a very, very short space of time and that delivers value from, uh, from day one. Um, but the nice thing about that is that under the hood, it, you've still got all the flexibility. You still own all your data. You can still control all your data. You can go ahead and uh, implement new tracking, new data models, change anything under the hood. Um, so hopefully it's a kind of a best of, uh, best of both worlds type scenario where you can start from day one with something that gets you 80% of the way much, much quicker than starting from scratch, um, but has all the flexibility and power over time to develop with you and your business as you, uh, as, as you guys get familiar with Snowplow. Um, so we're pretty, we're pretty excited about solutions. We're building some of these internally ourselves. Uh, we're working with partners um, that are building them. Um, and some of those partners are, uh, uh, are in, in, in the room um, today. Um, we're looking at, at some vertical specific solutions in retail, media, mobile subscription, and two-sided marketplaces. And the idea is that they might be composed up by sort of solutions that sit at the level below. So kind of a, a web module, maybe or a mobile module or a, a support desk module. Starting to take all that work that goes into taking the underlying Snowplow technology and implementing it and, and, and packaging, packaging that up so it's easier, easier to implement. Um, in terms of the second priority that I mentioned at the, bot, uh, the, at the beginning of, this, of the presentation, we want to make it possible to run Snowplow anywhere. So historically, uh, Snowplow has been uh, built for AWS, and our deployments have been really closely tied to AWS. Um, that has changed. Um, that's starting to change. That started to change when we launched the Kafka version. And the Kafka version of Snowplow is the one that the, the, the folks at Capital One have have deployed. So that opened up the possibility of running Snowplow in a non-AWS environment. Um, and we're working pretty hard at the moment on porting the entire pipeline to be able to run in, in GCP. And currently a lot of that focuses on working on the BigQuery loader. Once that port is complete, we're gonna look to port to, uh, port to Azure. And those developments should have a pretty big impact on our users. It should mean that you, our users, can lift and shift your Snowplow pipeline off of one cloud environment and drop it in on another. If you decide, you know, you're running on AWS today, but you want to run on Azure tomorrow or GCP, um, that becomes uh, possible. But it also means that potentially you don't have to tie yourself down to one platform. If you are running in AWS predominantly, but you want to load the data into BigQuery, that becomes possible too. So kind of uh, having a hybrid setup so you can use the, uh, the underlying technologies of choice in whatever cloud environment uh, they happen to be in, uh, that kind of hybrid cloud setup. The final area that, we're, that we've been doing and are still doing a lot of area is around, um, is around data compliance and protection. This is a pretty interesting space at the moment. On the one hand, you've got regulations like GDPR uh, coming in. And on the other hand, you've got things like the Facebook Cambridge Analytica um, story that, uh, that really blew up. What is clear is that the way um, we think as an industry and as a society about data protection and the rights of um, individuals over the data that describes them is changing quite fundamentally. And that puts some really uh, some really quite tough obligations on um, companies that are collecting and using data uh, to, uh, to do so in a much, much more uh, careful and controlled way. Uh, any company that is collecting data and using data to drive decision-making, that's taking personal data and using data to drive decision-making, has to be really, really careful about what data they collect, how they're processing that data, how, they're, how long they're retaining that data and what they're, uh, what they're using that data for and make sure that all that usage is kind of um, compliant with the, the wishes of the data subjects and, and what is and isn't allowed 
by the law. And that is, that's a really, really big shift. Historically, it's been really, really tempting um, to collect data wherever the possibility has arisen and put it in places like data warehouses and data lakes where smart analysts can come to that data and um, think of novel new ways to use the data uh, to do valuable new things. Um, and that's, that's a lot of the attraction of being a data analyst. Actually, the world we live in today, we've got to be really, really careful when we take that data that's been collected for one purpose because we want to use it for another. Um, and so we've built out functionality to make um, uh, tracking um, data subject preferences, so tracking things like consent events, uh, first-class methods in our client-side trackers so that the information about what a user does and doesn't consent to you doing with their data lives with the data that that consent might be governing. Um, that's part of what we're doing. But uh, a big area of focus for us over the next couple of months is um, building out functionality to help companies control how the data, and especially personal data, is used after it's been collected. Um, and so what we're doing, what we're doing here is we've, um, we've launched an enrichment that pseudonymizes uh, the data that you collect. So you can determine what fields you want to pseudonymize uh, and thereby effectively scrub it of personal data, but then make it possible for companies to selectively unanonymize it if they want to use the data for purposes uh, where you need to know who this data relates to, i.e. personalized marketing. And what that introduces is the opportunity for companies to have a check before the data is used for those purposes that that, that, that is legitimate. So we're, we're moving away from a world where the data just sits there and anybody can take it and, and do what they want to it to actually enabling companies to put in place processes around ensuring that its use when that use involves personal data is, is okay. Which is, which is otherwise a pretty tough nut to crack. And the good news, of course, is, is as, you know, as you'll know as Snowplow users, you've always had complete control over what data is collected and, and how long that's retained. Um, so that's what's keeping us busy. Uh, but this week, uh, we're pretty busy with um, New York. So I'm out here for the week. Um, can all the Snowplowers raise, raise their hands? So a, whole, a whole bunch of us are out here for the week. So come talk to us, come talk to us tonight. Uh, let us know if you wanna meet up while, um, while we're um, out here. We love, to, we love to listen, we love to talk. And hopefully you guys have some questions uh, for me and the rest of the team now. Um, as you're looking to load data into a broader variety of platforms like BigQuery, are you thinking about uh, how to use functionality that's unique and native to those tools? Like, for example, BigQuery uh, supports uh, complex nesting of fields, right? That might make might enable storage of custom attributes on events uh, in more flexible ways than in another than, than in other databases. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a great question. So yes, the answer is, is, is we absolutely do. So we already support loading the data into, for example, Redshift and Snowflake database. And the structure of the data that we load in both those databases is totally different to take advantage of the characteristics of each of those databases. So for, uh, in Redshift, we're, Redshift is pretty poor with nested data and JSONs, so we shred all of that out into separate tables um, because Redshift is pretty good at letting you join between tables. But with Snowflake, we're loading a single events table with uh, a nested J uh, JSON structure, and the structure of the data that we'll be loading in BigQuery looks a lot closer to that than what we're loading into, into Redshift. Uh, so some of the things you were talking about, uh, specifically like masking data and then unmasking it uh, for compliance, uh, curious as to like how much of that 
is you trying to be forward thinking and get ahead of this or how much is, you know, current customers saying, Hey, we want this feature right now. Um, it's when we took a, a look at the, it's particularly the GDPR regulations as that, as that was, as, as that started to be something that everybody was talking about 18 months ago, it became clear that, the it became clear to us that that issue about controlling the data once it had been collected it's such a key it's such a key element of gdpr and it's so practically difficult to um to manage i i it w um it was when we read that that we started thinking about masking and selectively unmasking um the data um and actually since we've started talking about that functionality with our users we've had a really a really mixed set of responses some users really really like it some some don't like it at all so for some the fact that you can selectively unmask the data means that fundamentally they they won't call the data pseudonymized and uh, it's they're like no 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 there has to be pots of personal data that we can market to and pots of anonymized data that we can't and we can't have any gray area in between. So there isn't, our, our approach is to build uh, tooling that companies can take and deploy or not as they see fit. But what, what we're seeing is different people are interpreting that regulations in totally different ways and using our tool set in totally, totally different ways to, uh, to, be, to be compliant. I'm, yeah, maybe, maybe as the first cases are brought under that, under under gdpr we'll start to see some consensus emerging but at the moment i'm not seeing i'm not seeing that consensus appreciate it cool well if there are no more questions we might conclude the talks um there but stick around um uh stick around i think there's more there's more beers i don't know if there's more pizza um, I want to say a big, big thank you to uh, Katie and the Data Dog team for hosting us. This is, this, this, this venue is absolutely incredible, and, and you guys have been amazing. This, uh, you, you've done everything, and it's, it, it's all been fantastic. So thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Um, thank you very, very much, um, Offman and uh, Graham and the... Andreas and the Capital One team and the Datadog teams for your awesome, awesome, awesome talks. They were really, really interesting. And thank you all for coming and showing up and looking forward to grabbing a beer with you all and, and, and having a bit of a chat now. Thank you. Oh, oh, there we go. Like he said, thank you guys all so much for coming out. I hope you guys really enjoyed the talks, the pizza, the beer. Like he said, keep the networking going. Please pick their brains, enjoy some more beer on us. Um, right now though, we 